see a dentist is guaranteed a certain amount of money per day, whether he or she is busy or not, that could lead to some problems, which we're going to talk about right now. This is the Dental Practice Fixers, Episode 10. I am Dr. David Maddow, along with Dr. Richard Maddow. Great to be here, everyone. Hey, it's great to be back with you. We really appreciate you, and we are the fixers, as we say. Let's get right into a great question we received. Um, and we're going to go ahead and answer it as best as we can, as we always do on these episodes. And I think this question actually turns out to be multifaceted, even though it's maybe single faceted when you hear it. I got it on my <laughs> phone here. So, okay, well, here's the question. And that is, hey, guys, we recently hired an associate with a guarantee of $600 per day. But sometimes the schedule falls apart. Question, what can we have the associate dentist do to help out the office? Do you think it is weird to ask her to make phone calls and book her patients since our front office is short staffed? So I think that's a great question as it is. And then it also leads to other questions like, should you be paying a guarantee per day to an associate dentist? So let, let's talk about all these issues. What do you think? Where do you want to start? Um, maybe we should start with why that arrangement in the first place because I think that arrangement in itself could lead to a lot of problems which it sounds like it's leading to problems already I mean this so this dentist signed an agreement and he or she is she making she okay it's a she she's making six hundred dollars per, per day whether she's busy or not she's guaranteed that amount of money I mean why would you want to have an agreement like that why why wouldn't you want to have the dentist responsible for his or her production and, and working hard and knowing the more you the more you work the more cases you do, the more you're going to make. There's, you know, like, there's, you're investing in the practice. Well, I'll tell you exactly why. I think, um, remember back to our day, I don't want to sound like an old a fogey, long but time ago. Uh, I graduated dental school in 84, you graduated in 80, we both did our residencies, and then we both were looking for associateships before we had our own practices. It was a different time. I think we didn't have huge student debt. We didn't have corporate dentistry. I mean, these days, just think of a student graduating, they've got a lot of debt, and they're being made an offer by a corporate dental practice. Well, that's, you know, those practices are all guaranteeing a patient a, a per day yeah, guarantee. Yeah, yeah. So I think. Are all, co all corporate practices are doing that? I can't saying? speak for every single one, exactly. but I, I know it's, it's very typical. You get, you make X per day. X per day. I, I think with bonuses and chances to earn more. But yeah, essentially, someone will know, well, if I take this job at crappy corporate dental office, at least I know I'll be able to chip away at my loan. If I take this job at this other practice where they're saying, yeah, I get 30, 32, 33%, what if I have a shitty day? I won't be able to chip away my loan that day. So I think we can understand the temptation here where it might be tougher to hire someone without a guarantee. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I, so, okay, if that's the way that they have to do it, I mean, I don't agree with it. I don't right. think it's good, but I mean, these are corporate, corporate people owning these dental practices. They must know what they're doing, right? Um, I just, I just can't. I just. I'll say I agree with you. I don't like the model. I don't like it either. I don't like it either. I think a, an associate dentist is different than another team member. It's different mm -hmm. than you know someone else, and they should be paid on what they collect. It's the only thing. You know, when you're an owner dentist, you don't get paid if the money doesn't come in. Right. You're, you're a dentist. Right. You're in the major leagues now. Right. You get paid on what you. And if you don't like that arrangement, then get a job with you know, government agency or a super corporate practice, whatever. If you want to be in private practice, there's a little bit of chance you got to take. You know, here's the way I look at it. I own a dental practice. This is like, you know, if I, if I own a dental practice right now and I'm hiring somebody, it's not my problem that you've got massive student loan debt. It's not my problem. I hire you as a dentist. The way we do it here is you get a percentage of what of the work you do, and that's how you get paid. So, okay, but let's, let's go. But I, I agree, but for some let's reason or another okay, now, this practice... Yeah is in a situation, yep. $600 a day guarantee, if they work five days, that's $3,000 a week, that's $150,000 a year. Yeah. Guaranteed. $150,000 guaranteed. It's a hell of a guarantee for a young dentist. So I guess we gotta, we, gotta, yeah, we gotta answer the question then, so if that dentist has holes in her schedule, I think anything's fair, they can tell her to do anything they want her to do. They can tell her to get on the phone and start calling, I mean, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right that she gets on the phone. It's, it's, it sounds kind of weird to have like the dentist calling. It's like big, but again, this is the model that I don't believe in in the first place. So getting on the phone and doing what? What are they oh, doing? They asked if she should be calling patients. Okay. Should be should she be calling pa Call let's, what patients? What patients are you calling? Let's, let's just say go through the million dollar file okay. cabinet. And people that haven't been and people that are overdue to, to schedule. They haven't scheduled for some reason. They got you know they got dropped and they need to be called. 
the same thing that an office manager or a scheduling manager would be yeah, doing. So this dead, it's very weird. But again, it goes back to this this whole model, this whole model of the corporate dentistry thing as is weird as shit. So they're breaking but the rules. The reality, they're, the reality. they're breaking the rules yeah. anyway. So that's yeah, it's it's a reality. So the dentist might have to go ahead and do some stuff that she that's they're not that's not clinical. I'll tell you what I have this dentist do. Without question, I'd say, let's just call her. What's her name going to be? Jane? Mary. Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. Mary Jane. Last dance for Mary Jane. I'd say, Mary Jane, see that, that building down the street where well, that building is the blah, blah, blah corporation. They've got great insurance. We have a bunch of patients. I want you to go to that building, meet with the HR director, and tell them why our practice is the best in town and why they're patient, and set up something, a lunch, a bagel, whatever it is. Do something, some people might call it ground marketing, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Do something in the community. Don't just sit there doing nothing. That's unacceptable. If, and again, even though this person's being given a guarantee, it's up to them in a way to grow their little piece of this practice. So let's come up with some ways to do this. Yeah, um, that's one of the first things I thought of when we, when we read the question that this person should be doing everything possible to grow her part of the practice. What if that is calling patients? What if well, that is going through the million dollar file cabinet? Yeah, um, but I, I, the ground marketing thing is important too. I mean, yeah, every, very important. Yeah, I mean, she should be doing, I guess she should be doing that anyway. Like every, everybody in the community, when she goes to a restaurant, when she goes to get her dry clean done, handing the card, getting into a conversation, handing a card saying, I'm Dr. Mary, Mary Jane, Mary I'm Jane. new in town. I just, I'm with this practice. I'll take good care of, you know. Blah, 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 go see the internist down the street. Go see the chiropractor down the street. Well, I don't know. We've got to draw the line somewhere. Go see other health professionals in the area. Make yourself known in the community. Yeah, I mean. What's wrong with that? I did that when I first opened my practice, and I was the owner. I, made, I, I met everybody. I went to the school, and I gave, like, go to the elementary school and give a lecture to the kids and bring but, little baggies and all yeah, those things. Yeah, but you were, see, you were the owner, and you were incentivized because you knew that when you went to a school and, and gave a talk, or when you went to a business, or when you did a, um, you were flipping burgers at the country. Flipping whatever you did, burgers all whatever, day long. You knew that that was going to come back and make you busier, make your practice busier, earn you more money. This person is guaranteed Six hundred dollars a day, whether she works or not. I, I don't know whether the incentive is there for her to be going crazy to be bringing more patients. She'd probably rather have holes in the schedule. Well, then that's the wrong person for your practice because this person's being guaranteed a certain amount of money. They should have to work, and work isn't always drilling a. It's not always you know sticking a handpiece in someone's mouth and yeah. doing a crown prep. Work is growing the practice. But if you okay, if you if you were guaranteed six hundred dollars a day, let's say you're a young associate, guaranteed six hundred dollars a day. Would you want your schedule full to the max, or would you want some wiggle room and, and some openings? Uh, I, I want some openings. My understanding is that the guarantee is different than the potential. And so this formula is usually work. There's a guarantee, but there's okay. also a percentage. So you can earn more than okay. So that wasn't so that wasn't yeah. so that, that, so I'm going to make the assumption okay. that that's the case. If that's the case, if that's the case, then I would I'd be out on my. I'd be out doing everything I could to grow the practice. Right. I mean, you're not paying somebody six hundred dollars a day to sit in the back office with their thumb up their butt doing you know what. That just doesn't work. But was there something else in the question? I can't remember the question exactly. Was there something else other than should we have her call? I thought there was something else. Do you think it's weird to ask her to make phone calls and book her patients? Okay. No. Okay. And I think, I think everything we've been talking about are reasons not to do the guarantee. But, I, again, I think it's the reality in today's world. People, this is just the way it is. These young dentists I mean, are getting guarantees. I mean, look, you could argue that anything that's done to make the practice better is going to bring in more patients, make her more successful. You could, you, you would agree with that part, right? Absolutely. Okay, so let's say that the bathroom is a mess. Should she be in there cleaning the bathroom out to make the practice better? Well, I'll go back to this. I did it when I owned my practice. If I walked in there and the place was a mess, I mean, I'm not coming in there like a full cleaning crew, but I would straighten up the bathroom. I would do whatever it took, just like you would. It, a, a dentist does whatever it takes to make their practice better. And many times that means delegating, and many times it means doing things for yourself. But this person accepted a guarantee, and to me, as crude as it may sound, it means that they do whatever the hell the owner dentist tells them to do, whether they like it or not. Yeah, and that comes back, I guess, if it's the right person, the right person, and she's not lazy, and she wants to really grow and build, then I guess anything's fair game. Anything goes. But it's, it's still, you know, I, I guess I can't, my mindset is still like, hey, you know, you, you, you're a dentist, you work on production or collections or whatever it might be and not and not again I, look, okay i'll tell you what look you remember in the day when i finished i finished my uh, my residency and i had an associateship and a practice um 
for it was kind of like the original kind of an original corporate dental place. It was Sterling, and then they were it was actually and they had these like business guys come in once a week and talk to the doctor and tell him what to do basically. So it was kind of like fair, kind of an original kind of the uh, early early days early of days of dentistry, dentistry, yeah. right? So um so. I had a guarantee. I wouldn't even tell you what the guarantee was. It was so long ago. It was so low. Era. It was so low. But I, I also could earn a lot more the more patients I saw. But I don't remember if I was. I, they maybe would let. They would let, let me get close to the phone making calls to right. patients. Okay. They wouldn't let me do that. They wouldn't. But what? Okay, this person. Let's say they have a two-hour hole in their schedule. What's wrong with them getting on the phone and doing confirmation calls? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with our patient, Jim? This is this is Dr. Mary Jane. We're looking forward yeah. to seeing you at your point. Do you have any questions for us? That actually could go a long way. I think it's great. I don't see anything wrong with it. So as our, our answer is basically, from this question, our answer is have her do whatever it takes, non-clinical, whatever it takes to build a practice. Main calls, ground marketing, yes. whatever. But, but I would focus on the doctorish kinds yeah. of things, like ground marketing, yeah. meeting people in the community, doing talks in the elementary school or the senior center, the assisted living facility, whatever we're called. We don't call them old age homes anymore, you know, whatever they're called. <laughs> doing the doctor's things. But yes, and whatever the doctor says, they got to do because you're being paid a guarantee. Put up or shut up. Okay. I think All that's right. our answer, right? I, I'm with it, man. Let's do the call of the day. Sounds great. Let's All get right. into it. Hey, Rich, so before we get to the call, real quickly, I was reminded that we, you know, we just did a master class a short time ago at our Meadows Center. And it was a great day. And I just want to remind our listeners and viewers that we offer a master class for dentists. It's a great day where you come in and it's a day of learning. But not only a day of learning, we help you, we show you actually how to build your, how we can help you build your practice. And we'd love to have you come to Baltimore to the Matters Center for Dental Practice Success for our next master class. Check it out at masterclass.matto.com. It's for doctors only and it is, there is no charge for it. You just get to our, get to our Matto Center and we take care of you. And it's a great day. We've really helped a tremendous amount of practices over a short period of time. Masterclass. No question about it. And if uh, you have to get on a plane to get there, well, how do you get it? Can you get free airfare? You can because oh. <laughs> if you use Fat Merchant for your credit card processing, you're going to be saving more than your airfare amount probably every month, maybe much more. So, um, Fat Merchant is the disruptor in credit card processing. They do not charge an overage percentage, just a flat monthly fee. Uh, instead of telling you every single detail, we've got a special site just for you to check it out. It's bit.ly slash fatmad. Fats with two T's, F-A-T-T-M-A-D. So just go to bit.ly slash Fat Mad, F A T T M A D. As a friend of ours, you even get your credit card processing gizmo for free. So check it out. You start saving money. You'll have enough money to fly to Baltimore, even if you're coming from Sydney, Australia. And we'll see you yep. in the next master class. We want to see you there. Now let's do the call. Let's do it. Ready? Go. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. To serve you better, this call may be recorded for training and quality purposes. Yeah, okay. I get it. Office, how may I help you? Hi, I've got a question for you. I'm looking at your website, and I'm interested in becoming a new patient, and I see the new patient special includes dinner on you. Hello? Um, let me take a look here. It says new patient special, twenty dollars off plus dinner on us. Okay, let me double check. Okay, I think that's our new special. Let me pull it up. Sure. Do you mind if I place you on a brief hold to pull it up? Okay. Please. That is some horrible whole music. This is like computer generated. I wouldn't even call it music. Ah, yes, sir. So it is um, dinner on us. We give you a gift certificate to Pizza Rev. To where is it to? 
It's Pizza Rev. Pizza Rev. Uh, no, yeah, it's a pizza place. Yeah, of course. I don't really care for pizza. Can I eat somewhere else? Uh, no, sir. That's just what we have. A gift certificate to Pizza Rev. And uh, you don't come with me, do you? That's just yes, for me. Sir. You do come with no. us. <laughs> no, sir. Just no, sir. We just give you the gift certificate. Wow. What do I have to do to get that? Just come in as a patient? Yes, sir. We'll get you in and um, schedule you for an exam and x-ray, and you'll see Dr. <laughs> we'll go from there. Do you have any issues that we need to discuss at that time? And not that I know of. Just looking for a new dentist. All right. Well, very good. We're glad you gave us a call and that you've had an opportunity to look at our website. So that's great as well. Do you have any questions about our office? I don't. I I don't have any questions. The the free dinner really struck my curiosity. So I just wanted to call to find out about that. All right. Well, very good. I'm sorry I had to place um, place you on that brief hold. Um, That is one of our newer um, advertisements. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave you the correct information. I appreciate it. Do you have a specific time that you'd like to come in? I don't. I'm I'm still just doing a little research. Okay. Well, very good. Well, can I take your name and number down and I'll give you a call. You said you're just giving, um, just doing a little research. Sure. It's Jim Hinckley. Okay. And it's Mm -hmm. 801-242- 7727. 7727? 7727. All right. And um, when you say you're looking for a new dentist, what exactly are you looking for in a new um, dentist's office? I think they should be licensed. Hey, anyway, I really got to run, but thanks so much for your time. <laughs> hey, All thanks. right. Well, thank you so much. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye. Okay. Wow. That was that was incredible on many levels. It was unique, wasn't it? <laughs> on many levels, that was a great call. Yeah, I got to tell you, I was just you know, as I think we both do when we do our calls, just um, put in the name of a town, they right. put in dentist to see who comes up. You go to their website, right? And this website was really striking. The second you go to it, and it was a beautiful website. Right. This big ad comes up: free dinner when when you come to see us as a new patient. Free dinner, free dinner, free. It was like smacked me in the face. She had no idea. Well, it. so that's number one. Yeah. If you're going to have a, like a, a, um, a big ad on your website announcing this free dinner, this promotion, don't you think at a morning, at, at the very least at a morning huddle, they should, the doctor should make everybody aware right. of this promotion. Everybody should know about it. It wasn't like some obscure thing that was on a page off of a page right. off of a page in a corner on a sidebar. Just it's tremendous top up thing. It was very, very obvious yeah. right there. So she should have known everything about it. Putting it on hold and saying, well, I don't know, it might be a new promotion. That wasn't really good. And I wonder what some of the older promotions would have been. I would have basically said, well, what are some of your older promotions? Well, free massage, what was a free massage? Um, so uh, she should have known she should have known everything about it. That's number one. Yeah. Well, okay, let's do number number zero. Number zero. Was it really necessary to tell the person twice that the call's being recorded? I was still, seriously, <laughs> I I was starting to feel like, a little creepy. I mean, when I call a place, I don't like it when they say the call's being recorded at all. I know we've come to accept it these days, it's very normal. Um, but twice, no, you're right I felt a little that. creeped out. Yeah, I didn't catch that as quickly. So, yeah, yeah that's so. Yeah, I agree with that totally. totally. On then, home music, on home music. Uh, what was it? It was horrible, right? It was, it was, it was like kind of like computer-generated yeah, yeah, piano, yeah. fake piano music. Get yourself a, some good old home messaging. Absolutely, please. Please. Yeah. Okay, so that's so we killed that one already. Okay, that's three things. Okay. This this may be cultural. I don't really like the yes sir, no sir thing. But again, I oh, think this is in the South and totally maybe it's cultural. the way they all talk or so no, cultural. That's fine. We'll give you okay. I think that's fine. We'll give you a cultural yeah, yeah. break here. I think it actually you know, Yes, like sir, it, no, sir. No, because they're different regions of the, like, yeah, I think that's totally yeah. acceptable and, and probably charming. I think it's I think that's fine. I thought she did a lot of things really well. Speaking of charming, she was an absolute pleasure. She was very nice. I really nice. felt that she cared. Yeah. I mean I felt like she was gonna be there pizza rev right with me. <laughs> for a second I thought she said she comes with you she was she was kind of making a joke right. it was hard now, to tell right <laughs> right because she was from the south right yep. now um do you think obviously they're, they're paying a certain amount of money for these coupon for these for these dinners do you think she should have gone out on a limb and said well if you don't like that let me see if we can get you another restaurant or is that was that would that have been you you clearly said I don't like pizza would that have been a, a beyond the call of duty to say well let me see let me see if we can get you something somewhere else well is there a fine line between beyond the call of duty and offering incredible customer right. service? I, agree. I mean, what if she had said, well, 
Um, everybody seems to love Pizza Rev, but if pizza's not for you, I'm sure we can work something else out. What kind of food do you like? I mean, that could have been like a whole start right. of a new conversation. And even even like a Starbucks coupon or something, something. But so not, you know, it just wouldn't take elevated that to, the, to a higher level for sure. That's, that's great. Great yeah. idea. And now there's right next to Pizza Rev, there's Ming Hung's Cantonese cuisine. I'll take it. You like that? I'll yeah. take it. That would have been incredible, sir. Yes, yes. That, I think maybe above and beyond, but a great, great good. suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Now, she did say something. She said, uh, is there any specific time you'd like to come in? I can't tell if I like that better than offering two good times because, I mean, again, she, was, she did that really well. But if you say, is there a specific time? And I say, yeah, I'd like to come in at 4 p.m. And you don't have 4 p.m., then you have to backtrack. So even though it was a good effort, mm -hmm. I would have preferred, fantastic, we can see you today at 2 p.m. If that's mm -hmm. not great, we right. tomorrow at 11 a.m., which works best for you. Because once they offer a time and you don't have that time, then you're kind of pigeonholed. I don't know if pigeonholed is the right <laughs> word, but you know what I mean. But it's, well, since we're on this part, this, okay, so we're on this part of the call where I think we're both going to agree she was fantastic. First of all, I love the question she asked. And this might not be verbatim, but it was something like, well, what is it that you're looking for in the new dentist? Yeah, that was interesting. That was at the very end. Great question. I mean, yeah. so she is in the top 1% because she was asking I mean, questions okay, about back that. I might, and, I might be disagreeing. Oh, really? Okay, let's hear it. I'm going to hear Is what are you looking for in the new dentist really a great question? Like, what's the point? What, people don't know what they're looking for. I'm calling for the free dinner. Her job is to get me off the phone and the appointment book. Right. Right. Um, do you think most people, when they see they're responding to an offer like this, really know what have given any thought to what they're looking for in a new dentist? Yeah, I think they do. I think um, everybody wants painless. Painless. Everybody wants like let's say elite affordable and and somebody that's caring. I, I think so. I think if the person, if you or the person calling would have would have said any of those, yeah, I'm just I just I'm I'm really anxious when I go to this dentist. I just want somebody that's caring. That gives her ammunition to say, well, our doctor is really, really caring and gentle. I, I, think, it was, okay, I, don't, I, think, I don't think it was bad. Point well taken. I, I think you could see it as maybe excessive, like at that point, just get the person in. But that might yeah. have been also after I made it clear that I wasn't ready to make an appointment yet. I can't remember exactly. Maybe. Maybe it was. But the, I guess the, one of the reasons I'm saying this also is because she was in that top 1%. 99 point something percent of the dental practices out there would never even gotten to that point. They, they would have said, okay, well, thanks. See you later. So she, she, at the very least, she took it to that level where she was engaging in conversation, asking a question. Maybe we didn't, maybe you didn't love the question, but she asked a question and she did, she did everything she could. Yeah, no, she, she, the she, she kept the positive conversation going. No yeah. question. About it. And then when I made it very clear, I wasn't going to a point at the very least, she got the contact. She info. got your contact. Yeah. That's, that's the top point one percent problem. So I'll tell you what, we cannot blame it on her that she didn't know about the promotion. That's a good that's point. That's the dentist or the marketing manager. It's not her fault. So, so she did everything right. She did. She did. That's a really good point. That was not her yeah. fault. She she shouldn't have to come in every day to the office at the morning huddle and say, "So, doctor, are there any more promotions I need or to she, know about?" She called it an advertisement, which I didn't really like all that much. But that's just a, you know, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, splitting that's, that's, that's fine. That part's fine. So, what grade are you going to give her? I'm giving her an A. I got to tell you, I'm getting, and I think since we started this podcast, we're in season two. I think it's the first A I've ever given. I believe. Well, you know what? She has an A. I'm going to give her an A also, and I'd love to go share a pizza with her, a pizza rev. That would be so I nice. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but it will be fun. Maybe if we're lecturing in that town, we'll go to Pizza Rev, and then we'll just see if there's like a new dental patient sitting somewhere using a coupon <laughs> from this crack. How can you tell if they're a new dental patient? I don't know. They have pizza burn. I can't, and, I can't feel anything, Doc. I can't feel it. I can't eat with them, Doc. What kind of pizza breath from dentist? Or if they say to the, they go up to the counter and say, I just, I just got this certificate from my dentist. How much, how, what can I buy for them? How many pizzas do I get? Half a pizza and a Coke. The dentist is highly recommending Coke. Or Pepsi. You get one slice. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're from Dr. So-and-so. You get one slice. You get one slice and a Coke. At Cheapskate. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, hey, that is, this is episode 10. Episode 10. Episode 10. Season two of the Dental Practice Fixers Podcast. Thanks for being with us. Go give us a good rating on iTunes. We love it, and we really appreciate you taking the time to give us a listen. I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. Dr. David Maddow, see you next time.